Okay, so I here's I actually summarize a section called parameters affecting TG for a given polymer. Let's say you have a given polymer. Here's an actually example for the experiment that has been long time long been done and is still considered to be one of the best experiments that has ever been done for the polystyrene. Okay. Polystyrene is a really favored, uh, it's a nice system. It is a thermally uh, stable. You can make it into a monodispersed polymer pretty easily. The temperature is about 100 degrees C, so you can kind of the, uh, make it glassy and heat it up to 150, make it rubbery. So the experiment itself is uh, doable in many, many sense. Okay? Uh, so, so these are good temperature ranges. And uh, this is uh, what we call the I mentioned this is also known as a Flory Fox equation, and I would say Flory Fox e equation, and there is a many versions, and this is mainly about the TG equations. Okay? Homopolymer TG equation, and he showed this the molecular weight dependence of the polystyrene and doing a series of the work. And this is a work was published in Journal of Applied Physics by Tom Fox and the Paul Flory, 1951. And uh, this one is, uh, I, I do have an original article if you want, you can have a look at it. Uh, the original article do not have uh, uh, the, the figures, so I just actually made a figure based on the equation showing up. And left hand side here shows uh, essentially molecular weight uh, up to one million from the, from the close to zero, right? I actually that the data start from 1,000, and measure the TG, uh, rescale them into the degree C, and this is how the data looks like, okay? So the higher the molecular weight goes up, the TG goes up, and uh, uh, it's kind of that there is a certain uh, molecular weight that where you don't uh, see any uh, molecular weight effect here. And this is uh, really hard to see because this is a linear, right? Linear scale. And you remember that I asked you guys to do the homeworks on the log log scale? And look at this. Uh, this is a log scale now. I put in a now log scale. The, the understanding of the, this is the same data, okay? One is put in the linear scale of the molecular weight. Now I put in the log scale from 1,000 gram per mole to 1 million gram per mole. Now, this, uh, according to this equation by a fluorifoxic TG equation for polystyrene, you will see that uh, this one saturates to a certain higher uh, value. So this is a, what we call TG infinity, and then this is a TG. And uh, if you're looking at the textbook, actually there is an equation they, they show, which is a... TG infinity is TG plus certain constant divided by M. And if you're looking at this, this is an equation shown up uh, above, it's the same one. Okay? So the Tom, uh, the Park Fox equation is actually just rewritten in a way. TG, which is uh, depending on the molecular weight, is a TG infinity and infinite molecular weight minus certain constant divided by chem divided by m and uh, the physical significance of the k coming from uh, the the extent of the how many chain ends and and so on so the, uh, this textbook actually nicely explained about is if uh, uh, the effect is actually this coming from how many uh, chain ends are, are there to give out this uh, uh, more free volumes. So this is a more like a chain end effect. The higher the molecular weight it is, the chain end is the chain end portion is uh, greatly diminished. So this is a where things are quite molecular weight dependent. And as you can see, this is about this is about ten thousand. 10,000 gram per mole, you kind of saturate about here, but if you have a 5,000, you are in this uh, TG is depending on molecular weight.
So if you have a polystyrene molecule weight about a few thousand, uh, it is almost like a, a liquid in, in its own sense. So first factor is a molecule weight, and you need to have a sufficiently large molecule weight. I would say something at least larger than uh, 10,000 or more. Okay, so that's a, that's a something, uh, one factor. So recently, there are people who are interested in the second factor, which is a film thickness. So this is uh, actually shown as a, uh, a, a recent work, and then they were able to spin coat the film. So if you make the film this thin versus film this thick, their TGs can be different. Okay, if you make it super thin enough, and this the 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 thickness is happening around the 50 nanometers. And do you remember the for the for when molecular weight is about 10 to 1 million gram per mole? Approximate radius of generation, anyone remember that? That's about 300 angstroms, and that's about 30 nanometers. So we are talking about when you're in this scenario, you're Polymer films is about the diameter of the radius of generation. And if you go even deeper, then you will see the polymer chain films is not even long enough than the ESON uh, two times radius of generation. This is a very, uh, uh, a lot of theory has been studied, and a lot of people has, has studied on this. And if you're looking at this uh, even lower molecular weight, and that's the one that is actually showing the pretty much the same thickness behavior. Is so therefore, it's not the radius of gyration is affecting this, but it is something about what we call the mobility of the polymer chain on the surfaces. And if you have a sufficiently large amount of the polymer, uh, the mo molecule is sufficiently large, this contribution from well, what so what is so what is called a slippery layer contribution is significant as film gets thinner and the thinner. So that's for the TG goes down and then kind of the levels levels down here. Okay. So this is the effect of film thickness is also in the area of the thin film uh, affects a lot. And this thin films is actually quite thin enough and uh, we are uh, you, uh, those thick thick uh, very thin film uh, polymer films are being used currently in the microelectronics, so you should understand that when as the film gets thinner, even the what we call the TG is not your the bulk TG. Okay, so this is a thin film TG. Film TG, and this is essentially similar to bulk TG. Okay, so the, the, the thickness dependence is uh, right there. And also, the, one of the well-known uh, TG is, what about if I make a copolymers? Right? And here's an actual textbook figure, shows the example of uh, what about if I make the N-butyl acrylate and the starin. Okay? N-butyl acrylate, which is CH2, CH, CO, O, and C4H9. So this is a, like a, a pretty long four, uh, four carbon uh, side group, and their TG is very low, 50. And then if you have a 100% styrene, right? Once again, CH2, CH, the benzene group, uh, that is a styrene, and your TG is about 100 degrees C. And then uh, you, you make this uh, as a copolymers, and the, the way that people write here is CH2CH, COOR, and then CH2CH, and the benzene group. That benzene is connected to this carbon. And they put this uh, random copolymer means is a uh, composition X and the Y, 
where x and 1 minus x and then they put a square bracket to to represent that this is a random copolymer so this is a random copolymer and in your uh, in the textbook if you look at the textbook equation number 16.9 and this is also known as a Fox blend TG equation and this is actually probably the the most well-known TG equation is uh, Fox uh, TG equation for the blend or copolymers and there this equation shows the following okay? this is a line okay this is all Fox equations and how they how, how this one show is 1 over TG of copolymers is weight fraction of A divided by TG of A and TG over B for weight fraction of B and that's an equation shown up here is a TG is shown up as a fraction of wave fraction of I guess a polystyrene here okay and so the other one so the the beauty of this is WB is just nothing but 1 minus WA so it is a very simple plot as long as you're using this Kelvin temperature and you can you should be able to get this uh, blend or copolymer TG and there is uh, some uh, theory worked out but this equation is works out very uh, useful actually this is the one that actually from the existing literature I was able to find out and they say the Fox equation is from here and once again that's this is same as 1 over TG that is shown up here is nothing but uh, wave fraction of A of TGA wave fraction of B from TGB and then they actually find out okay so this is a what is going to, should happen when you have a TG uh, following this homogeneous uh, uh, mixtures of two different thermal properties uh, homogeneously well mixed that's a Fox equation but now what they see is an observed TG is a little different from the Fox prediction and that's what they see and I also choose to show you these figures here because this one is when you see this discontinuous changes this is all TG's right TG is all about showing this or showing that this as a uh, at, uh, at TG okay? when you change the temperature TG is about discontinuity in the DSC diagram so this is a DSC profile you are seeing this uh, temp uh, this behavior. Uh, what about when you have a immiscible polymer blend? Most polymers are immiscible, and this figure is uh, actually quite uh, boring. Okay, so what you see here is this is a WA and the TG, and then what you see here is this. Okay, so this is a 1.0 and this is a 0, 0.0 and you will see the data looks just like that okay and when you have a really small fractions and you don't see the uh, TG so here so this is a this is a TGA I guess so this is a TGB okay and these are the data points that you probably blend it and then they are immiscible, so they are just showing the two TGs. So for, for that, when you see this, you will see this temperature, and this is a TGA and TGB, which is uh, always shown up. Uh, there are two different domains. Okay, this is a CP 
from DSC. What that means is here and there, for example, they are forming this A domain and B domain in the sample. So they have showing the TGA and the TG from B domain when they exist as separate domains. We are, we are seeing this example looks like that. However, when you are forming this, what is called a miscible blend, and your behavior is pretty much single TG that dep whose TG is uh, depending on the, uh, the one, uh, one TG, if it is a miscible, okay? So if I, if I draw this as an example, decide to actually to show it to you. This is a TG WA and it's more like like that. And this equation is reference point is uh, the Fox TG equation and then here you only see the TG in between the single TG. So this is the TGA. This is the TGB, what you're supposed to see. But if you're the miscible, this is a physical proof that there are miscible AB blends. And, and then their TG is somewhere in between here, single TG. And that's the data points you can find out. And if by changing the composition, uh, you'll find out the TG changes along with the composition of wave fraction of A over B.